Hi guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be going through why I believe Rory Laird will be the out and out number one highest scoring player in the um, A4 Fantasy 2023 game by a good 10 or 15 points over everyone else and why he's um, why most people have him in their team. So before we get into it, remember to quickly like remember to like and subscribe as it is crucial as um, this season is coming upon us as um, in this week as I get a lot of my mid price and rookie um, pr player things out, uh, videos out, and then we'll also get into the also just some other play reviews and some matchups as well and potential like tag threats and stuff like that, but there'll be plenty and plenty of videos coming out in the near future for that. So now onto the screen here, we'll bring up Rory Laird and we'll just quickly see he's priced at 1.07 million, which is what a good 70k more than everyone else and 70k if we do the um, multiplier number, which is like 8,850 odd, I think it starts out as. That is, if I quickly get to my calculator on my phone, should have done this beforehand. That's the equivalent of almost eight points better than everyone else in the game. As you can see here, 8.1. I could have just done that as well and saved time. But yes, so Rory Laird is a pretty good player, obviously. And he's in 25% of teams. If we look here, 26 on here, but it's rounded up. So 25.59. He just looks the part. Last five of 120.6. Last three of 111, and I don't know what happened in one of those games. He must have had a, he must have had a bad game by only scoring 92. Yeah. So if you're gonna get 90, 90, 92, 95, and 97 are his only below 100 scores. He had 16 out of 20 scores above 100. So that's pretty big, especially post post round 11. He had the 92 was his lowest so if we go over to these i'll be using ds dfs australia as the website for a lot of my stats especially in this video um if i go over here and i switch to is adelaide so 78 percent center bounce attendance and that's yeah that's as good as you're pretty much going to get considering if we look over back over here and we go over here, he had 78% time on ground. And we look back here, he had 78% um, center bounce attendance. So he's a full inside mid. He doesn't do much else. So that's why that's there. Um, let me get rid of this. Then, yes, yeah, so he's going to be there pretty much the whole time. And if we actually look here at some of his games... The 68 against Port. So, and then most of the time actually here, he is so... Do I think his um, time on ground will improve? I actually do think it will improve by two or three points as um, he did have a slow start and he did have an injury pre-season. So that could even improve his um, points average as well. If we look here, we've done that. Um, if we look at the team summary here, you'll see just in general how, um, I guess, above he was compared to everyone else in his side. Um, 20 points better than Dawson, 23 better than Keys, 27 better than um, ROB. So he is just, I guess, a lot. Um, and here are his breakdown of all his stats a lot easier to understand than what the A4 Fantasy website has. Points per minute. He went 12 scores over 120 as well. So he's got basically 12 captaincy scores there in 20 games. So 60% of games he's captaincy scores. So if you look at, if he plays the full season, that's 13 games at least. And even like his, um, if we go back to here and we go back to fixtures, 2022, no match stats. Um, not captaincy, not, I would say anything over 110 is captaincy. Right, so he's got one, two, three, four games that aren't really captaincy material anyway. So you've got <laughs> 16 games that his lowest score that wasn't a ton was what? 116? 
anything lower. A 110. 110 outside of the couple of 90 scores. And I think the thing that sets him apart is he's really, really actually hard to tag tag out of the game. Like 31 disposals, 26 disposals, and he got a 95. And he didn't even have that many tackles. Um, like a lot of these games, he's not even having more than like 30, 32 touches, somewhere around there. If we look at this 90 game, he had 25 touches and still got 90, 92 points. So he only needs like 24 touches to get 100, basically. Near enough 100. And you have those ridiculous games, like this Collingwood game where he had 20 tackles. He got half his points and tackles. And that really does add up very, very quickly. So, and then do we have a matchups? So he first starts the season, if I look at 2023 against GWS and from what I remember of researching for this he does really well against them as 118 last year 90 105 so I guess in terms of Rory Laird um how he did how he did last year it's not it's pretty average but it's pretty pretty good for anyone else in the comp so you take a captaincy nod against GWS he plays Richmond next which I believe I had and he doesn't play terribly well 98 average yeah he doesn't play well he's only average of 98 or 99 and yeah he had a pretty off game against them and then if we look who does he play next he plays Port the week after and if we look at Port, you'll see here, what's the average? Only 94. And he scored 116 against them. And that does include a couple of 60 scores. And then even the game after he plays Frio. And if we look at Frio's numbers, wherever they are. Am I missing? Oh, there they are. So Rory Laird only averages, where was he? If we look here, he averages... Only 93 against um, Frio, and he didn't play against last year, but 110, so he should do the, pretty much the same. I don't think they'll employ a tagger. So if I go back quickly and finish this off, that's the review of Rory Laird, a very um, quick review, and how he should be the best player in AFL Fantasy, and how I'd suggest if you can probably get him to get him, although I wouldn't start with my structure I don't think I should get him because I already have the best forward and best defender in Doherty and Dunkley and very high priced um, ruckman as there aren't too many ruck, good rucks out there so I don't think if you have you can't really field um, the best three of the um, in Dunk, Stock and Laird you probably have to pick two of them to get so that's the reason why I don't personally have him but I have a pretty I have the next best in I'll be it'll be either Oliver or Brayshaw depending on the taggers that can get named on Thursday so thanks guys and that's me done for today and I'll see you guys in another video